Hi, we continue our coverage of Indo-Pacific 2025 in Sydney, Australia. We are now on the booth of Thales, meeting with uh, Gavin Henry. He's the campaign lead for maritime autonomy at Thales in Australia. Gavin, good morning, great to meet you. Good morning, lovely to meet you, thanks for having me. We are standing by a display consisting of the Blue Century Array and the Spare Tooth uh, UUV by C2 Robotics. So Gavin, what are you demonstrating here? Yeah, thank you. Um, first of all, it's a really exciting concept that we're promoting here, but it's a bit beyond a concept because we're, we're bringing together a host of building blocks that are already in place. Um, you can see beside me, we've got the C2 Robotics scale model. Uh, we've been working with them for about a year, um, designing and supporting them with our Blue Seeker sense and avoid payload so that they can safely surface. Uh, that's a mandatory requirement from the Royal Australian Navy. By working with them and their agility, we're able to also consider alternative payloads to support future operations and mission sets. And I think it's where Talus sits. We're looking at um, not necessarily all of these great bits of technology, but bringing it together as a mission set. Uh, and that's the exciting bit for me. So we've got the C2 robotics platform. We've got the Blue Sentry Thinline Toad Array. That's a passive sensor. Uh, and that is, the heritage of that comes from 30 years of Talus Australia building, um, um, or designing from the ground up the Toad Array for the Collins class submarine, which we provide all of the sensors for, for them to win and fight at sea. Um, beyond that, we've also got partnership with Austal, um, a con the continuous shipbuilding partner for the Commonwealth. That's really exciting as well because it enables us to commute the capability up to the area of operations and sustain them at the edge. And that's what Austal bring to the party. So all of the building blocks, um, should the worst case happen, we are ready to go um, very Im immediately with a capability. So tell us a little more about the, the, the Blue Sentry. So it's a thinly uh, passive sensor underwater for acoustic detection, anti-submarine warfare. Uh, and now it's been in development for a number of years, I guess, but now it's particularly relevant to uh, uncrewed systems. Yeah, that's correct. So as I say, the Genesis is the Toad Array for the Collins class. Um, that's what really the smarts from our engineers have gone into designing something that's truly modular, scalable for UXVs, um, and also appropriate in terms of robustness and its, uh, its form factor. So it's, it's specifically designed for uncrewed maritime systems. Our focus, I suppose over the last eight to 10 years, has been working with the OCS team with the Blue Bottle. And that really is coming to fruition now for the benefit of the Commonwealth. So we're really quite advanced in the trials and acceptance for that, comp that capability for the Royal Australian Navy. On the screen on the below, you're uh, showcasing some kind of uh, scenario. Can you talk about this? Sure. So I mentioned about the building blocks. So it does it does um, articulate the building blocks. It shows actual video rather than just animation. But from the outset, it's around the mission management. So planning um, with um, necessary prediction tools built into the M Cube system. And I'm sure you've heard of the M Cube system from Talus in terms of um, a building block for planning and execution, post mission analysis for autonomous assets, uh, doing various mission sets, not just mine warfare, but now breaching into the, particularly the ASW domain. So it commences with that. It's got uh, the acoustic prediction tool built into it, uh, and that enables us to position the sensors to best effect to get the maximum performance, whether that's positioning them in the water column or on the seabed. And I think that's quite unique for what we're promoting with this very, very capable system. Um, I, I would highlight that the benefits of this particular system is its um, uh, price point and its ability to scale. Uh, and I think when those who know Australia and the vastness of the area that we've got to cover uh, and the complexity of the challenge that we, ha that we potentially have in an undersea environment, we have to have the ability to scale. And that's what Talus can do to support the likes of C2 Robotics. So um, ostensibly it's about positioning this sensor into the most appropriate location, whether that is in a strait or a particular choke point that's relevant uh, strategically for Australia. And then it's listening. Now you can just listen and it can be standalone to just listen or you can add what we've done is adding an active source through the CAPTAS-1, uh, the family of CAPTAS combined active passive toad array systems. 
we've included the CapTAS-1, which is a modular containerized solution to go on the back of a craft of opportunity, essentially. And then you're, you're pushing out an active signal, which then can be received by multiple of these uh, receive arrays. So you've got a tr one transmit, multiple receive, and you can kind of triangulate where a contact may be. Um, the other smarts is currently on the OSEUS vessel, we have humans in the loop. So we're able to sec send secure data for a human to verify the waterfall. So the narrowband, broadband waterfall displays to actually give verification of a, a classification. What we've got to do, and Talz's focus up to a demonstration of this whole capability, is take that smarts and put it underwater. And that's no small feat, um, but ultimately that data then has to come back to the surface for actionable intelligence back to the likes of Headquarters Joint Operations Command. So a human can still verify what the vehicle will say through a bell ringing technology is a, an appropriate contact of interest. So yeah, that's the exciting bit. All we're trying to do is find um, a, a means of capturing, so detecting, tracking, and classifying contacts uh, as a kind of bell ringer for bigger forces. You know, the, the, the more integrated focus force, which could be a, a P8 or a capital ship to come in and deal with that contact. Uh, Gavin, beyond uh, Australia, are you looking at uh, the international market as well from an Australian perspective? Uh, a couple of years back, there was an announcement uh, regarding Blue Sentry uh, with the cell drone uh, in the US. Uh, I know there's also, I've heard discussions uh, regarding Blue Sentry for uh, Naval Group XLUV for the French Navy. So can you talk about business opportunities outside of Australia for this uh, area? Sure, sure. So um, certainly around the autonomous systems, this has really exploded in terms of the need, the demand from international customers. Uh, it's also a demand from allied nations particularly who want to work in unison. So you get a real force multiplier effect if you're all using similar systems like the CapDAS or the Blue Sentry, which are fused to the same sort of frequencies to enable that multi-static collaboration. So we've got a lot of export opportunities for the Blue Sentry, some of them associated with USVs, some of them associated with um, uncrewed underwater vehicles like this Speartooth. I think that's really exciting because you can share in the load and then share in the gain. Um, so yeah, that's, that's exciting from our point of view. And it's uh, quite relevant with uh, things that other navies outside of Australia are looking at, uh, things like, I mean, it's been in the news, but uh, Atlantic Net in the UK or uh, Hellscape in, uh, from a US perspective. So navies are really looking at scale, scalable solutions with uncrewed systems for underwater uh, ASW capabilities. Absolutely, it's, it's all about scale. And as I say, if multiple allies are using the same capability, then that obviously solves a big problem. But you're quite right, the UK are leading edge with regards to a project of record to really gain momentum in this space. And that's what I said to you about sharing the load and sharing the, the, the spoils, I suppose. So we're actively engaged through our, um, our companies in, in Europe, particularly Talos UK and Talos France, of course, driving this capability or the in integration of this capability in a, in a broader system. Uh, it's very exciting from an Australian point of view. All right, Gavin, that was very interesting. We'll keep a close eye on this and future, its future developments. Thank you very much. That's a pleasure. Thank you very much. Lovely to see you again.